Mr. Speaker, as the Prime Minister thought through the message that he's sending to Canadians across the country when one favoured business, Bombardier, receives hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer handouts while he's punishing others with higher taxes and a carbon tax. So my question is very simple. Does he plan to also bail out the dry cleaning shop in Fort McMurray or a diner in Stratford that's gone out of business because of his bad decisions? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we were elected on a commitment to create good middle class jobs across the country and help those working hard to join the middle class. Uh, that's why we're pleased that this uh, loan of almost $400 million to Bombardier uh, is going to create thousands of good quality middle class jobs across the country. But we're also pleased that by approving the Line 3 replacement, uh, we're creating 7,000 full time middle class jobs. By approving the Trans Mountain expansion, we're creating over 15,000 new middle class jobs. We are working right across the country, including investing $1.3 billion in Alberta infrastructure alone, because we know creating good jobs and growth matters. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, the Prime Minister said he would borrow $10 billion a year to pay for his promises. Now that total is close to $25 billion. And last night we learned he's borrowing another $370 million to send to one single company, Bombardier. His current plan isn't creating any jobs, so my question is this. Exactly how many jobs will this $370 million create? The right Honourable Prime Minister. The aeronautics industry across this country creates, uh, is, is responsible for thousands of strong middle class jobs and multiple small businesses right across the country that are spin offs from the high quality manufacturing that goes on as Canada is a leader within aeronautics in the world. We will continue to believe in a strong future for uh, our research and development in aeronautics, but also uh, in a broad range of, uh, of industries. That's why we're being thoughtful about how to create good middle class jobs uh, across the country in many different industries. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Okay, Mr. Speaker, wait a second. The Prime Minister wrote a cheque for $370 million to a single company, and he didn't get assurances from them that they would hire one single new worker. Mr. Speaker, I really hope he gets a new negotiating team before he sits down with President Trump and he talks about <laughs> Leader of the Opposition. No answer. No I'll, answer. I'll make note that the Prime Minister no was speechless. No Mr. Speaker. So let's be clear about what's happening today. The Prime Minister is handing a giant corporation $370 million and forcing taxpayers across the country to pay for it with a massive new carbon tax. He's making life easier for a multi billion dollar corporation who said they didn't need the money while making it harder for people ordinary taxpayers, families, and business owners. Can he please explain to us, one last time, how this makes any sense? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, by uh, making a loan to Bombardier of close to $400 million, we're investing in research and development here uh, in this country, uh, creating thousands of good new middle-class jobs uh, in a growth industry that's going to continue to demonstrate uh, how competitive Canada can be uh, in the world. We continue to be focused on innovation and research that's going to lead to good jobs for Canadians in a world uh, that is changing. We need to make sure that Canadians can continue to compete at the highest levels uh, because I know we're capable of it and we're demonstrating it every single day. This member from Alberta asked the Prime Minister an important question about jobs. And I bet if it was 290,000 jobs in Toronto, he'd get up and answer it. Mr. Speaker, job losses are at an all-time high in Alberta, considering we probably won't see him again. The least he could do is respect Albertans, respect this member of Parliament, and get up and answer her question. Order, allowed. I remind members that they're not to bring attention to the presence or absence of a member in the chamber. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my uh, colleague answered that question with, uh, uh, with uh, full detail and uh, a tremendous amount of compassion. Uh, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, uh, the party opposite talked for 10 years about standing up for Alberta, and yet when we approved a pipeline that's going to make a difference uh, in the lives of millions of Albertans, what did they do? They started talking about how it'll never get built, so don't bother investing, don't bother hiring people for it. They're talking down the economy of Alberta and real decisions we took for political gain. That, Mr. Speaker, is why uh, people are disgusted with the approach uh, that the members' opposites are taking. Santa Claus when I need it. Uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, there's the Liberal arrogance that Albertans have come to expect from this Prime Minister. This Alberta MP asked a very good question about jobs. If it was 290,000 jobs in Toronto, he would have been paying attention and he would have answered the question. He she deserves the respect. Albertans deserve the respect. Why doesn't he get up, do the right thing, and give the people of Vegreville their jobs back? But now that we've seen the withdrawal of the partisan and botched appointment of Madeleine Mayer, we are left with an interim language commissioner and an ethics commissioner whose term is close to an end. And of course, we haven't forgotten that the ethics commissioner is currently investigating the prime minister. So given the Liberal Party track record on appointments, which McGinty win Liberal can we expect Jerry Butts to appoint as ethics commissioner? <laughs> numerous that uh, the a party opposite is actually criticizing on appointments uh, because the fact of the matter is they completely botched the Supreme Court's appointment, which is uh, so important. No Prime Minister had ever botched it as much as uh, the previous Prime Minister had. Uh, we were pleased that we were able to do uh, something that a lot of people said weren't possible, which is find an extraordinary Supreme Court Justice from Newfoundland who was bilingual. These are the kinds of things that we look for and we take seriously. The responsibility of nominating the best possible people uh, for the posts right across this country. The Honourable Member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thought my question was on the Ethics Commissioner, not the Supreme Court. Right. But with this Prime Minister, it's all socks, no action. <laughs> <laughs> what we are left with is an Ethics Commissioner whose term is close to an end. She is currently investigating the Prime Minister himself. Right. We have no faith that this government will nominate someone who is truly impartial and nonpartisan, who is associate an officer of this parliament. Will the Prime Minister take the advice of his own botched official languages commissioner and ensure that any appointment has the, the support and the consent of all recognized parties in this House? Right. 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 Speaker, we're proud of the independent nominations process that we've put in place. It is open and available uh, for all Canadians to apply, whether it's through the extraordinary appointments we've made to the Senate or the outstanding appointment we made to the Supreme Court. We're going to continue uh, to live up to the high expectations that Canadians have. Uh, unfortunately, as, as we've seen, uh, the members opposite like to play partisan games, but we will stay focused on merit-based appointments that look like Canada. That's what Canadians expect. The Honourable Opposition House Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, this is painful to watch. Madam Mayor just withdrew her name, right. confirming exactly what we have been right. saying all along, that she is too partisan for this appointment. Now, the Prime Minister has a choice. He can learn. He can show just a little bit of humility and say maybe he made a mistake, and he can apologize, and he can confirm that the next appointment of the Ethics Commissioner, for example, will not be a partisan appointment. Could he do that? Just once, show a moment of humility. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this government has been pleased to reach across the aisle to appoint special advisors, special counselors, and, advise, uh, and, and counsel on various things. Uh, we are pleased that we've been able to highlight uh, the breadth of merit that is available for nominations to great positions uh, across this government. We've refused to politicize the appointments the way the previous government used to do, and quite frankly, where the partisan yelling of the, of the uh, members opposite has taken us today. Uh, we 
recognize the extraordinary service that Madeleine Mayer has always offered to uh, minority language communities, uh, and we look to find uh, someone just as qualified as she was. Well, opposition house there. Well, in one of those appointments, namely Kim Campbell, he forgot was the Prime Minister. Exactly. So that, that was a big mistake. Mr. Speaker, on this appointment, the Prime Minister has embarrassed the Heritage Minister, he's embarrassed himself, and Madam Mayor has had to withdraw her name from this process. We are asking the Prime Minister for a very simple commitment, because frankly, he can't be trusted on this. Will he commit to Canadians that appointments for officers of Parliament will not be political, especially the Ethics Commissioner, who's investigating him at this moment? Right on the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, after 10 years of Stephen Harper's government, Canadians needed uh, an approach to the last party. More days on merit, more days on Order. 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 It must be Wednesday, I think. The Honourable Prime Minister has some more time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Canadians know that they deserve uh, an open nominations process based on merit that is willing to recognize the full diversity of our country. That's exactly what we're focused on. That's exactly what we're delivering for Canadians.